Je, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. Are all these people, the citizens of this country, uh, uh, are they complaining about um, the method of government they have now? Okay. Um, from Delhi, oh, from this day newspaper, Access Bank UK received approval uh, to commence operations in Hong Kong. Uh, this is on top of the name template of that paper. But the banner headline there says, ECOWAS, ECOWAS leaders, it's time to activate counter-terrorism. Terrorism standby force. ECOWAS leaders, it's time to activate counter-terrorism standby force. And uh, we we'll look at the riders. Promise gradual easing of sanctions on Niger. It says subcommittee. And then Tinubu stresses need to re-engage nations under military rule. And finally, from there, it says uh, move key to fast tracking return to civil rule. And hells where for conceding defeat in Liberian polls. Mm. Okay. Okay, no more stories coming here. Gentlemen, let's look at these stories before we look at uh, the rest of the papers that we we'll have this morning. Getting back to the Punch newspaper, where we saw the, um, the stories about Dangote Refinery coming up January. I'm starting with you, uh, um, Eze, Osta Eze. Okay, they say that um, petrol is delayed, but uh, Jet A1 will hit market by January. Diesel and Jet A1 will, will hit market by January. What do we stand to gain? Well, the thing is, I don't know why it's not expected for a private business. A private business. And then eyebrows will raise over the fact that they say the diesels and jet A1 are going to hit the market by January while the show that is used by the common man uh, will be delayed. So now goes to show what their priority is. Their priority is providing for those that fly in the air, which makes up just the 1% of the citizens of Nigeria, while the needs of the other 99% will be to uh, further notice. So, and he explains what's been playing out in Nigeria over the years, where the interest of the few supersedes the interest of uh, the many. Uh, the way the Sources of the of the country are, are shared. You find out that the cost of running the national assembly is almost as much as the, uh, the budget of uh, the the nation. And these are some of the things that have continued to cause unrest across the country. You don't have enough money to set up the right infrastructure to reduce the um, the level of insecurity and the level of inefficiency in moving goods and services and humans from one place to the other. But you're paying uh, members of the National Assembly obscene amounts of money in uh, salaries and allowances and kickbacks, but you can't pay 30,000 naira minimum wage to the masses. So our people really need to understand where our problems are from. I've continued to have it time and time again that it is important for the sitting government to understand that some of these palliative measures they are applying like saying that they are giving 25,000 naira to people for four months, or sharing, uh, sharing to a few persons and all that. In, uh, these things are not going to solve the problem members. if you continue to run around what the real, the core issues are. What the citizen, what will make the citizen really, really believe that what you're doing is sincere is when you look at what their call is. Their call is that the National Assembly needs to be, the cost of running the National Assembly needs to be cut down. All right? What the people masses are saying is that. You buy rubbish, you buy something you have to enjoy. So when Nigerians keep selling the electoral process from INEC to the, uh, the masses, the electorates, mm -hmm. then we keep having what we are having. But when leaders are made, we, the masses will enjoy. Sure. Because when you produce a goods or when you render services, you get something in return. Mm -hmm. That's how my administration is. We practiced it. At least I remember the last election, I was part of a process and we know what, why we did what we did. Because we wanted something different. And I think we are getting something different. Yeah. So until the people, and I mean, until the people, I constantly repeat, until the people decide what they want, and go strictly for it. 
no matter who ox is God. There are some people who say in the last election and their votes were not count. And I will tell you that the processes also was a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to go into what happened mm -hmm. because even those who went for the election, the processes say that every political party must have an agent. And some political parties didn't feel that agent. Mm. So, the political party that fielded agents had a field day. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to. I don't want to start unmasking the mask. Oh no 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 no! Don't worry. Who, well, who it's... can read the, in between the lines? No, mm. that some persons did not amass the followership properly. Mm -hmm. They did not harness it, mm -hmm. and if they had, it may have been difficult. Mm -hmm. So the masses also is part of the problem. Yeah. And then those who come out for political position should know that those popularity, those um, uh, uh, should I call it welfare? Those, uh, those um, uh, supports mm -hmm. should not be played or toiled with. Yeah. You know, you must be ready to dot the I's and cross the T's so that the final outcome, their effort shouldn't be a waste. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We're still, we still want, I still want us to look at this security situation in the country. Um, Osta. Yeah. Well, based on the headline of uh, Daily Times. Mm -hmm. They say the security agents are battling to block replay of Jonathan era Abuja insecurity. Well, the insecurity is, you know, uh, creeping into the the capital of the nation more and more. We keep hearing cases of invasions here and there, and cases of um, even ahead there's been bombing too. You know, somewhere close, but I think in Kaduna or so. Kaduna. Yeah. So and that one they said was done by the military, Nigerian military. Okay, and um, well, who knows what the real uh, thing is? Probably they are trying to play it down, but the fact remains, just like we keep saying that, because we've not, you know, started. First of all, um, we realize that there's been some re uh, recruitment in, into different uh, security agencies in recent times, and we got to find out that uh, for a police system, many persons did not, uh, we did not get enough people, enough. Uh, applicants from mm -hmm. the southeast from the reports i got okay and that goes to show that people are not yet confident in you know the way the, some of these uh, security agents are being you know taking care of the how their welfares are being handled and how their their affairs are being you know taken care of by the the powers that be so the truth remains that we don't have enough people policing the country all right Imagine a nation that has over, uh, over 200 million you know, citizens and we don't have up to 10% of that all right, in the police, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the police agency. All right? How do you expect them to handle affairs, civil affairs, civil issues? So the police system is overwhelmed. The, the military system is overwhelmed as well. All right, and because the 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 general system, the the way the nation is operating, like we mentioned, the the welfareism of the nation is non-existent. All right, it makes it that everybody is in a desperate mood, mm -hmm. and some persons who have been influenced so negatively are the ones who are in the bushes constituting nuisances. All right, causing some of these insecurity issues, they found out that it's even more lucrative to go into kidnapping than to do a white collar job, a blue collar job, or whatever uh, kind of job there is. Many persons who are engaged in this are probably engaged in some of these kidnapping activities are probably persons who had been used by politicians and don't. All right? The, that uh, lifestyle that they were enjoying while they were still under the auspices of these politicians enjoying their, their, um, their monies, they need to maintain that lifestyle and therefore they go into you know, thuggery, they, they go into, um, sorry, kidnapping and, you know, killing and maiming and all these other uh, forms of social vices that we're experiencing today. Mm -hmm. So the only lies on the presidency and the ministries that are in charge of the securities to, uh, to, to, you know, sit up to their game. They need to understand that a lot depends on the security system this time around, all right? They need to look into the welfare of the members of the security agencies. Okay. How well are they being paid? Mm. Okay? How well are they being taken care of? Are their affairs being taken care of? I've listened to some policemen complain that even during the COVID times that the, the monies that were meant to buy them, 
what do you call it, uh, face mask and hand sanitizers were diverted. Many of them did, were not getting enough face masks and hand sanitizers. When meanwhile these things were being donated, and when these things were donated, somehow they don't get to the, the end users, the people who are on the roads. All right? And that's why some of these policemen engage in some of the, the nefarious activities they engage in. All right? That's why you find a lot of military people who have gone a wall. All right? Because they are no longer happy. They are not getting enough ammunition to, 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 to face their enemies. And their enemies are getting a lot of money. They are being paid millions of naira every day. And they are getting you know, more sophisticated weapons to continue to engage in their, their, their evil activities. Okay. So we need to call a spade a spade. It's time to call a spade a spade. And it's time we start up to you know, our responsibilities as political leaders and as, as, mem as uh, heads of agencies mm. in the security system. That's the only way we can actually contend this. Whatever it is the security agents are doing right now, and, and for the fact that it was written this way, it still goes to show that we are politicizing the problems of Nigeria still. Why are you still talking about Jonathan's era when we've moved on? This is actually like two eras after Jonathan's era. Why are we still mentioning Jonathan's era? Why don't we just face the, what the problem is that the insecurity is increasing in this particular era? How do we sort the problem? How do we con contain this problem so that it doesn't go out of hand? Why are we mentioning Jonathan's era? So I really blame the, the management of Daily Times for, for captioning this, this headline like this because it's, it doesn't make sense. These are, these are these supposed to be professional communicators. Mm -hmm. And this kind of communicating of uh, what uh, our problem is, it seems like we're trivializing it by politicizing it. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, let's look at what's playing out uh, between ECOWAS and uh, this nation's uh, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Mali, Niger, and a whole lot of them that... Uh, got into um, um, experienced some a change of government recently. Uh, it, it does appear the ECOWAS is pedaling. This, this player they were saying that uh, they are trying to ease the sanction uh, or whatever. What did I get here? I promised gradual easing of sanctions in Niger. The story is coming from this day newspaper in Niger and then set up committee to review the sanctions and a whole lot of things. Okay. So... Yes, um it's, we don't just uh, weld the beast from the start. Mm -hmm. A lot of issues need to be considered. Mm -hmm. Why we are there queue in those francophone countries? Mm -hmm. What led to what? And why did the people now, even were happy or welcomed, undemocratic approach to governance? Mm -hmm. And you begin to see that. Um, like Igbos, we say, nah, I came when they can come mad. You know, the hands of a monkey sometimes can be assumed to be the hands of woman. Mm -hmm. You know, their colonial masters did not actually give them freedom, but rather uh, they gave them, uh, they gave, should I call it right, and withdrew freedom. Mm. <laughs> so, so and the people now became wiser over time. You know, uh, Mali, Mali we say you don't deceive the people all the time. All you know, the time. You know, stuff like that. And then, yes, in as much as I will not, I will not subscribe to forceful takeover of administration or government. But oh. sometimes um, some radical approaches are required. Yeah. You know, when situations require, uh, you know, some approaches that you need to tell somebody that, I may think I'm a fool, but I'm not a fool. Mm. And then, uh, ECOWAS as well. Oh, that I didn't keep quiet because I didn't know what to say. Uh, I didn't keep quiet because, you know, the silence, the, the peace is not the peace of a graveyard, you know. <laughs> There's no peace in the graveyard. No. <laughs> so, um, what I expected the, the ECOWAS to do then was to engage. You mm -hmm. know, the three C's, you... You know, you apply the principles of three C's in conflict management and then to see how you can deflate the balloon. You know, you consult, you consolidate before you confront. But throwing it at them immediately that, ah, no, you must go back. I mean, ask the persons or the people what, I, what led to what and mm -hmm. then bring the minds down. So ECOWAS now is, to me, they are trying to follow the right approach. Yeah. You know, discuss with the people, make them understand that no matter how good a military administration is, I don't think it's better than a civilian role. Mm -hmm. It may sound very interesting at the beginning because power corrupts absolutely. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. At the beginning, it may look very juicy. Yeah. And then 
part of the problem Nigeria is suffering today, I must say it is because 75% of the operators in the temple of democracy have never seen democracy in their life. You know. And you can't give what you don't have. It's mm -hmm. not possible. Mm. You know? We grew up in the era of where the school, the, your teacher appoints your class prefect. Yeah. The school appoints the head boy and head girl. Yeah. You know, we have never seen election. Mm -hmm. of, in the classroom. You know, so when you are telling somebody who has never seen democracy to practice democracy, how can he give what he doesn't have? It's True. alien. <laughs> you know, it's alien. It's alien. Very it's alien. alien. So it's these old men that are parading themselves up and down can never practice democracy. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Because they have never seen democracy. This is the common Nabonian. So we need to come down to what democracy is all about. But democracy is a process, it's a livelihood, it's a system. Yeah. You know, you at home as a father, do you impose laws on your children and expect them to practice democracy? It's not done. You engage everybody. Democracy is all about engagement. Yeah. Even in the church. You know, the reverend fathers and the, the owners of churches will just come and say one thing without anybody asking them question. Mm -hmm. Where are you coming from? What is the essence of this to existence? Mm -hmm. So until we begin to practice democracy in the real sense of democracy, you know, then we, we, are, we are still running around the same circle. Yeah. And if we have not really benefited anything from the practice of democracy... Because we have not practiced democracy, so you cannot benefit. Uh, okay, because we don't know democracy, so we can't practice We know it. what democracy is, but... Because we're coming from the background, I'm just trying to make it clear that no matter how good military rule is, mm. you ca it can never be better than democracy. It can never be. It can uh, never be. So okay, let's, what let's, 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 let's look at this uh, Francophone countries. Yeah. Uh, do you see them returning to civil rule very yes. soon? If they are independent, the if way... they actually get their independence, which they have gotten, I see no reason why France should have a military base in some of these Francophone countries. What is the essence? Mm -hmm. Why are you policing me? I should police myself. I should defend myself. If you want to assist me in defense, give me proper training for me to be self-defending, so for me to be able to defend myself. I'm not setting a, 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 a military base within my... And possibly your military base may have more numbers than I do have, mm -hmm. my military. They have more, sophistic more sophisticated... Because they regulate you. They, they, they give them rights without freedom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They give them rights without freedom. So you, you don't even have the freedom to practice those rights that we are giving to you. And these are the same people who are selling democracy to you. So doesn't it show you that there's foul play being played somewhere? No, 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 no. Democracy, because, they are not selling democracy to us. Democracy has been in existence even in Africa. It's yes. been in existence even in, in Africa. Real, but, yes, in Nigeria. As yeah. an, I am an Igbo man. Mm -hmm. And the Igbos practice democracy. True. How? I am selling in Ekesia, no Biekeen, and Nageni. Nambuke. Nambuke, yeah, true. We had a proper democracy. Yeah. Where even the Igwe has Ndin Zen also. Mm -hmm. Who also guides him. That's the National when Assembly. The That's where the Ndin mm -hmm. Chief. Those are there. Yeah. The, the thing. issue is that we refuse to see holistically what we have, but rather wants to copy what they were giving to us. And we're on the other. I say, no, we talk. Who mm -hmm. are the military arm? Yeah. Who are the regulators of activities and events? Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Sure. Then, uh, uh, in a community, you have the Igwe. You have the Igwe's and whatever who regulate the entire community at the Igwe level. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the village heads. But for want of time, you Ogun, come to you know, so those things are there. Ogun Ebunam, I asked the question. Okay, let me take it over to you. Okay. Do you see uh, military rule returning very early or very soon? That's in this part civil, of the civilian rule. Yes. I don't see that. Rule, yeah, I don't see that happening. The reason being that one. The their colonial masters, all right. That's the, the France, all right. They are still not ready to relinquish the control they have over these countries because of the resources that they've been getting almost for free over these years. Let's understand that the battle this that has been going on between the our former colonial masters, I mean Africa's former colonial masters, and Africa in the present uh, new colonial age that we are in now is a battle for our resources our God-given resource. That has been the battle. Whatever coloration they are trying to give it, call it democracy, call it terrorism, call it mm. whatever it is, all these things are just, uh, what do you call it, uh, distractions they are trying to create so that we don't understand what is really happening. If we want to get our resources for free, without paying for these things. And that's why they are creating some of these issues here and there to distract the masses from what the, the real facts are. So okay. the fact remains now that the, these Francophone con African countries, all right, they've started understanding what the true issues are. 
and they want to take back their countries. All right? And they found out they've taken back their countries to a good extent right now. All right? And all these, the, remember, like you mentioned earlier, my co discussion mentioned earlier that the first approach the ECOWAS leadership had applied was actually the reverse of what true negotiation process is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. They started with confrontation at first, they started with sanctioning. All right? That, it's, that was because they had these um, uh, colonial masters blowing hot air in a, into, into their, uh, their analysis. And that was why okay. they could not focus on you know, uh, doing the right thing okay. at the right time. And okay. it, it actually wasn't a situation. They saw they are not getting any results. And that's why they've now come back to drawing board and they want to start you know, negotiating with this. We'll start looking for ways of you know, tailoring down on that harsh approach they had applied the first time. Okay. So I don't see civil, okay. civilian rule coming back all right, if we do not attend to these issues of making these our uh, former colonial masters relinquish their control. And this okay. same uh, problem we also have in Nigeria, all right? All as right. long as we don't make this people, you know, hands off our resources, hands off matters that concern us, if down to our political issues, we are not going anywhere. Because these people are the real arms that are controlling the, prop, uh, the puppet from okay. the background. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Osta, as the public affairs analyst. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Fanny Oguno Ibnam, also a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I had them very hot. <laughs> yes, I had them great guys this morning, though uh, our time was uh, somehow uh, deflected. But not to worry, tomorrow we're going to be here early to continue from where we stopped. My name is Dijoma. Thank you.